I was given the opportunity very recently of choosing any drone I wanted as a birthday gift. So obviously I'm going to choose a DJI drone. So what were my options or what did I feel my options were? Well, the Mini 4 Pro, the Air 3, the Mavic 3, the Mavic 3 Classic and the Mavic 3 Pro. Those were my five options that I thought I had. Rather than just choose one out of the five, I thought I'll eliminate them and see what I'm left with should suit me best. So straight away, I eliminated the Mini 4 Pro. Why? I've already got a Mini 2 and a Mini 3 Pro. And I don't believe that the Mini 4 Pro is much of an upgrade, if any upgrade at all, to the Mini 3 Pro. So it's gone. Next, the Air 3. I eliminated it. Why? Because... Two reasons. The main reasons were, first of all, the camera is not any better than the camera on the Air 2S. And if you're buying a new drone and you can choose any drone you want, obviously you want a much better camera. So, it's out for that reason. And the other reason is that I have a DJI RC Pro as my controller. It's a game-changing controller. It's much, much better than the RC or the RC2. And the Air 3 is not compatible with it. So, Air 3, you're out. That leaves me with the Mavic 3, the Mavic 3 Classic, or the Mavic 3 Pro. They're basically the same drone. They all have the fantastic Hasselblad camera as the main camera, and that is the, the best camera that you can get on a consumer drone at the moment. The difference between the three is that the Mavic 3 also has a tele-zoom lens, time seven, a time seven tele-zoom lens, and the Mavic 3 Pro has a times seven tele zoom lens and a times three tele zoom lens. So three cameras on the one drone or two cameras on the one drone or one camera on the one drone. So obviously you want more than one camera if you can have it. So the Mini 3 Classic is eliminated. So that leaves me with a Mavic 3 or the Mavic 3 Pro. Which one do I go for? The obvious choice you would think would be the Mavic 3 Pro because it's got three cameras, it's a newer drone. Obviously, if there's any slight hardware or software changes, they're going to be better in the newer drone. But I eliminated the Mavic 3 Pro and I eliminated it because it's over 900 grams. Now, that makes a massive difference. If you are flying in the, any EU country, plus a few others like Liechtenstein, uh, Iceland, I think maybe Norway, a few others, you can fly it in the C1 class category, which means you can fly it ex with ex the exact same restrictions that you have with a mini drone. That's in the EU, not in the UK, but I personally believe that the UK will eventually adopt the EU C classification. For a few reasons I'm not going to go into right now, but to outline, it's too expensive, too time consuming and too much hassle to try to come up with our own brand new classification system, get it passed through Parliament, get all the regulations in order, get all the labels printed. It's just it's, it's un unfeasible. And I think eventually they'll say, look, let's just fall into line with the EU, adopt theirs. So we've already, it's, it's already in, in place. All we have to do is say we're going to adopt that. I think they will, which means that in the UK, I'll be able to fly the Mavic 3 as if it was a mini drone with the same restrictions. OK? And that's why I chose this Mavic 3 here, the Wallace, as my drone of choice when I had the option of buying any drone. Now you can't fly it as if it was a mini drone at the moment in the in the UK, but with the A2C of C, you only have to have a distance of 50 meters away. And that's where the tele zoom camera comes in. I can be way, way further than 50 meters away Using the tele zoom lens, I can get as good a footage as if I was right up beside them, which you can't actually do at the UK in the moment with a size of drone. So for all of those reasons, I went with the Mavic 3. And what and, and the, the, the reason that I wanted this the tele zoom lens rather than saving a bit of money by buying the Mavic 3 Classic that doesn't have the tele zoom lens is for one reason. And that is, 
if you're going to do a parallax around something like this, this a structure, this is the Barony A-frame here in Auchin Lake in, in the east, east, east Ayrshire, in the south of west of Scotland. If you're going to do a parallax around something like that, when you use a tele zoom lens, you get that movie cinematic compressed effect that you just don't get by using a normal lens or a normal lens where you're going to zoom digitally. And I'm going to show you that right now because I'm going to send the Wallace this Mavic 3 drone up and I'm going to parallax around that bar in the A-frame using this, just the Hasselblad lens itself. Then I'm going to use a digital zoom and parallax and then I'm going to use the second camera, the tele zoom lens and do a parallax. And what I'll do is we'll move to the studio and analyse the three different bits of footage and just see what the differences are in that parallax effect. So first of all, a parallax around the A-frame with no zoom whatsoever. And now I'm going to pull the Wallace back and zoom in using the digital zoom and do the same parallax. And as you'll see in the screen recording, I've turned the side camera on so that as I parallax round, I can see using the sensor cameras if there's anything to the side of me, which is one of the best features that you can get on the Mavic, the Mavic 3 drones. I absolutely love that feature. It's invaluable when you're flying sideways, even better than the obstacle avoidance. So that's a parallax with the digital zoom. So what I'll do now is I will switch to the Time 7 camera. And I'll have to fly back a bit again. 
So with the Time 7 camera, I can actually do a, oh, I can do a, sp I can do a spotlight zoom, a spotlight uh, parallax on that too. So Time 7 zoom. And you'll see the, the, uh, the, 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 the spotlight zoom in that one isn't, isn't fantastic. So what I may do is I may just do a parallax, a manual parallax. So in the time seven zoom, a manual parallax. And this will take a bit of doing. My skills need a bit of improving. I need to come out and practice a bit more. <laughs> My skills aren't fantastic. So there we go, the three different types of, well the, the same parallax but with no zoom in, a three times digital, digital zoom and then the seven times tele zoom lens that you, you get with the Mavic 3 drone. <laughs> so let's switch over to the studio now and I'll have a bit of an analysis on those three different uh, camera selections for, for the parallax. So you can see in this parallax with just the absolutely normal Hasselblad lens with no zoom, it looks fantastic. It's a great parallax and it looks really good. It's no different from a parallax you can get with any other drone other than obviously because of the better camera it's it's a much much better piece of footage but the actual parallax itself looks exactly the same as you could get from from pretty much any other drone. Moving on to the Times 7 telly, telly, you can see the compression there, the background is much much closer to the A-frame itself and it does give that, that action movie, the Mission Impossible type, uh, type effect as you're spinning around something. The background is moving much much faster and it's much closer and you could probably imagine that with a bit of kind of action-y type music in the background it might look something like this. And then on to the, the Times 3 digital zoom, which to me looks really no different from the effect you get with an unzoomed lens, just the standard uh, wide angle lens that you get in the Hasselblad camera. It, it looks no different at all, except that it's not quite as sharp and it's, not, it's taking longer to parallax around because obviously you're further away. So this is the effect you'd get with a Mavic 3 Classic. And looking at all of the clips side by side, you can see what I'm talking about with the effect, that, that movie effect with the Times, uh, the, the tele zoom lens that you just don't get. If you look at the Times 3 digital zoom, you just don't get that effect. And the only way you can achieve that effect is by using a, a tele zoom lens. And I just think it's absolutely fantastic. It's 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 an effect. It's not something that you would use every time you're doing a parallax. You would probably use just the normal lens for most occasions. But when you do want that that movie effect, there's only one way of achieving it, and that is with 
a tele zoom lens. So those are my reasons why I chose the Mavic 3 for my birthday gift, even when I had the choice of the Mavic 3 Pro and, and any other drones. So I'd like to hear what you think about my choice. Uh, leave a comment telling me whether you agree with me or whether you think I should have gone for the, the, the Pro version or you should have think you think I should have gone for maybe the Air 3 or maybe the, the Mini 4 Pro. I'd be really interested to know what you think and I'd be very interested to know what you are thinking about for your next drone, for when you eventually decide you're going to buy a new, a new drone. Has what I've shown here today made any difference to that decision? Or have you pretty much decided what it is that you want? Give me a wee thumbs up if you got anything out of this video. See you on the next one.